Hey, I'm Chase Cunningham, Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Zero Trust, if you want to be like super cool. But I'm going to give you a, a run through of some of the most recent research that we published. And this is a topic that is super uh, important and applicable for most businesses nowadays. We're going to talk about cyber insurance. Now, we took it upon ourselves to go off and crawl through our data and come up with some, I would call it interesting analysis of the actuality of what's going on in cyber insurance. And what you notice is that Cyber insurance is growing as a market based on the fact that people are not kind of fixing the problem of being cyber secure. That doesn't sound like it's rocket science, uh, but the reality of it is there are trends that we can see that are feeding into this. And at the very end of this, what we actually have is kind of a, a basics, not for you as the business necessarily, but for the cyber insurance companies to look at this and go, look, here's kind of a minimum standard approach that we should make sure that an organization has. And all of this is based on our own data and our own research and a lot of input coming from the market itself, end users. So let's crawl through this a bit. And I want to make sure that everybody gets a real understanding of what we're talking about here. So as we see that things are escalating, I think I've read recently there was a 150% increase in uh, ransomware attacks over the course of the last year. Things are not trending the way that we would hope. We would hope that they would be going down. They seem to be going up. Now, that's a factor of a few different things. One is the fact that there is a, an election coming up. So the nation state targeting is getting more advanced. Uh, and then also, we continue to have this growth of vendors, third parties, APIs, kind of the uh, extension of low-hanging fruits that causes these continued attacks. And it's successful. This is a business for the bad guys. They're making money off of this. As long as there's blood in the water, they'll keep doing what they're doing. So escalation means insurers actually are going to do more to grow their business because it's kind of like if there's more car wrecks, more car insurers offer more insurance. There is also a, a growth of financial impacts. This year was up over $4 million per breach, which that's about a 10% increase. Uh, and it's not, again, trending the way that we had hoped. So all of these things, all these factors for the insurers means that there is more opportunity to issue premiums. That's not necessarily bad or good for those of us doing business, but there are things that we should know about. So I kind of came up with this nine foundational security solutions that cyber insurance companies should think about when they're thinking about, well, should we actually endorse someone with a premium to keep them in our portfolio? So number one, attack surface management software. Why? Because this is a good way for an organization to understand and send something off to the insurer to say like, look, here's what we have. Here's what's secured. Here's what's not secured, but we're aware of it, et cetera, et cetera. That can get you a, a bump on the premium if done correctly. Conversely, or uh, slightly uh, orthogonal to that, I guess you'd say, is exposure management. Well, if you have a tax surface, that's one thing. But what is actually exposed? Those things that are exposed definitely must be fixed. If I'm an insurer and I see that you give me this report that has a lot of exposures, I should basically start going, well, I need to change your premium because the risk is increasing there. Now, on top of that, you can play this into the risk-based vulnerability management. Not everything is always a vulnerability that has to be fixed. If you prioritize everything, you prioritize nothing. But it's really good for an insurer to know that if there's a risk, that they understand what the actual value of that risk is in the context of the business. Endpoint protection. We should all have some kind of endpoint protection. If you're running Windows, you got Defender whether you like it or not. If you're on a Mac, you've got a Mac, which really doesn't have much endpoint security on it but you can put endpoint security on it. If I'm an insurer and you're not running endpoint security, I'm not issuing you a policy. Most of them actually nowadays won't. Intelligent email protection. Well, why is this valuable? Well, because most compromise begins with phishing, like 90 something percent of it. So if you're using an intelligent email protection system, theoretically, you should have a lower risk, which theoretically should mean that your premium is affected. Data-centric security software. Why data-centric? Well, data-centric stuff, data-centric information is what's actually the lifeblood of the business. This is what the bad guys are after. What's the famous quote of why do uh, bank robbers break into banks? Because that's where the money is. Why do hackers break into systems? Because that's where the data is. So if you can provide your insurer with a map and an understanding of what your data is and the value of that data, you're doing something right. And that should affect your premium. Identity management. Why is this on here? Well, other than phishing, what's the main avenue of compromise? Usernames and passwords and Active Directory and bad identity management. You should have IAM in place and you should be able to show this type of thing to a provider to say, look, here's how we're managing identities. If you can't do it, not a good thing. 
zero trust networking. Don't rely on your VPN anymore. If you're an insurer, I would personally not insure anybody that's running on VPNs. Zero trust networking software has proven itself to be a better approach to the problem. This doesn't poke holes in systems. It's policy driven. Uh, this is a better way to mitigate and reduce the threat. And then lastly, micro segmentation. Why micro segmentation? Because we accept that compromise is going to occur. Micro segmentation helps us visualize and understand what's going on inside of the infrastructure. And the micro part means that we are micro segmenting things so that we don't have the proliferation of attacks. Yes, I may have a breach. Yes, I may have an attack on one thing. I don't want it to spread to everything in the system. Micro segmentation can help with that. Now, I wrote some more stuff in here about cyber insurance companies need a stricter approach because they've admitted that they really don't even have the actuarial data to come up with this stuff. Cyber is so ethereal. It changes so fast. It's so different. They're not able to say unequivocally, this is what we're insuring and this is why. It's not like a car where you got four wheels and a seatbelt and an airbag and they can look up a VIN number and this is what the policy is. It's really more uh, kind of what we would call from where I'm from, Texas, Kentucky windage. You lick your finger and stick it in the air and kind of hope you get it right. Not a good way to issue a cyber insurance policy. So if cyber insurance companies will lean on a more structured, more restricted approach, things can get better for people. There's a couple of pieces in here to note. So ensuring independent verification of security. We should not be able to do self-attestation. Uh, it's not good for the airline industry. Look at what happened with Boeing, right? Doors falling off of planes. But we should not be able to do that to ourselves. Uh, a certification that you've certified yourself as secure is pretty useless. What we need is outside agencies. If I'm an insurance company and you can provide me with a pen test or a uh, red team report, okay, now we can talk about the actual insurer side of it. Addressing moral hazard. This one was kind of interesting when you look through the data, but really trying to keep the risk down because of the way that people kind of do things. Uh, if you have, if you're doing business with less than reputable organizations or you're doing things that are potentially risky, you know, gambling, pornography, those types of things might be a perfectly legitimate way to make money, but it is additionally kind of risky. So there should be a difference applied with the standard there. Um, encouraging the right investments. Again, if you're a cyber insurer, you would hope that your clients are buying smart things that can actually fix the problem, not just buying things for the sake of buying things. There is actually guidance coming out from some of these organizations that can help us better understand, well, where is the smart money going? This is why I put in the research, look, 90% of compromises begin with phishing and passwords. That's why you need email protection and you need IAM. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to do this and there is no one is the only way to make this work. But the reality of it is, if you look at the data and do the research, you can understand where you should be investing your dollars to help you get the right premium. And insurers can be able to look at this and go, you know what, if they don't have these things, they're probably a really increased risk for us. And we don't know if we want to even issue that premium. Or if we do, it's going to be really, really expensive. Kind of like if somebody that had three DUIs and three wheels on their car and uh, a nitrous boost on the back of it, I probably want to issue a really, really expensive premium because odds are you're going to wreck. Kind of the same thing in cyber. So uh, this is really solid research. Again, we take our data from our end users. We do the research and we put this stuff out. I think if you have the time that this is worth a read uh, and this is a good way to plot, plan and scheme what your cyber insurance company should be giving you. If you're an insurer, you should look at this and kind of have a think about, well, is this how we actually deal with our customers and clients? And if we aren't, maybe we should. As always, stay smart, stay safe, stay secure. I'm Dr. Chase Cunningham for G2. Talk to you on the next one.